So I bought rear fanged lizard eating, non eating at the moment, mite riddled wild caught snakes. This isn't something that I ever thought that I would do or recommend most people would do. I kind of guilt tripped myself into this. So I and Ellie of Hills Herptiles went to a reptile store recently and we saw that they had a species of snake of a recent shipment from Egypt called Samnophis shikari, which is the shikari sand racer or African sand racer. Now, I know from an episode of the podcast that I recorded two years ago with Francis Coschieri, I and Ellie interviewed him about how he keeps his Samnophis. And so I had knowledge that they were incredibly heliothermic. They want a ridiculously hot basking spot, really high UVI, basically get treated like a bearded dragon. And they have really fast metabolisms. So I see them in this shop kept in bra plast tubs with a hide and a water bowl. And they weren't on overhead heating. They weren't on heating at all, as far as I'm aware. I think they were sat at ambient. So I said to the shop assistant, hi, hey, these guys, you want them to live? They're going to need like overhead heating, basically keep them like a bearded dragon. And it was very much like, oh, yeah, 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 cool, yeah, yeah. And I knew that yeah, 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 cool, yeah, yeah meant, okay, go away. I'm going to do what I'm going to do anyway. So I bought them. They were £75 each. I said, how much would you take for all five. They said 300 for all five, you're buying four and you're getting the last one free. I said, no, I think I'll leave it, but thanks for your time. And then I sat at home and I thought about it and I, I just couldn't leave them. <laughs> I couldn't leave them behind. I felt awful for them. And I knew they were a hundred percent bound for death. Like I, the snake needs such specialized care of the lighting that needs to be specialized anyway. And they were kept ambient. They were going to croak it. 100% meant death for those snakes. So I, I did it. So I came back and I was like, I'm going to take the snakes. And they started bringing them out in the tubs. And um, one of them was dead. And I goes, right, okay, so what's the price now? <laughs> and they said, nothing, the price hasn't changed. It's still £300. It's just the one that was free is the one that's died. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, really, fine, whatever. And they didn't, they they didn't look like they were very energized. They looked kind of a lackluster. And like when I saw this face and this big eye, and I was like, this face was like, save me. And I was like, fuck. Guess I'm buying, <laughs> buying these stupid snakes. <laughs> so get to the, the cash register or the desk or the till, whatever you want to say, the front desk, and she pops them all down, and I'm assigning this piece of paper with this waiver saying that I know they're wild caught, and I know they're not established, they're not even eaten yet, if they die, it's my own fault sort of thing, and I waiver that right to get a refund. And I, I'm signing that, and I see all these mites just crawling all over these tubs, and I said, Ellie, are you okay with these being in the car? Uh, to purposely point out the mites to the person in front of me, on the opposite side of the desk with by the till to just point out that I've noticed the, the riddle of mites. And they just stood there in silence. So like they did end up knocking off like five pounds each per snake. So I paid 280 total in the end. Um so I've got these snakes home. I put them in a a warm bath with a little bit of washing up liquid. So what that does, it ruins the surface tension for the mites so they can't float and it makes the snake slippery. So they fall off and then they drown because they can't sit on the surface. So I pop the snakes, all of that, all of them into that, give them 20 minutes or so in there on, in warm water, just warm them up gently that way. Get this like hospital emergency situation enclosure set up in the garage away from all my collection apart from the diamond python. But I thought if the mites spread to the diamond python, I can just next guard the one snake rather than have to deal with an entire room being infested. So that's what I did. And the garage is also 16 foot by 16 foot. So it's the opposite end of 16 feet. So I'm hoping I'm hoping and praying. Um, they came out of that and I put them in there. The hospital set up, they had like um, white paper strips like you do for hamsters and like all these twigs and stuff and I gave them 
two halogens, one 100 watt, one 60 watt, a Reptisun 10.0, and then I put like ceramics as well for nighttime to really bolster that, and I just let them cook themselves. These snakes want to bask at like really hot temperatures. I watched them, and I saw a snake literally go under the basking spot and go, ah. Oh. And you knew that that snake hadn't felt that in so long, and it was just like, thank God. God. Now the problem is getting them to eat, they naturally would want lizards and a small portion of the wild diet in studies has been rodents. Now Francis Coschieri, if you know him, he has had his since 2007 and he transitioned them onto rodents. So they've been eating a very long time, eating a rodent exclusive diet. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Now I've, I've asked him questions and he's helped out a bit uh, with establishing them or trying to establish them anyway. Two of them are far larger than the other two. Those eight pinkies on day one off the bat, so I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay. The other two are far smaller. One's still got a fair bit of weight on it. The other's very, very skinny. So I'm hopeful that the skinny one is going to pull through. I've pulled him out and put him in our bedroom in this ratchet enclosure set up that makeshift thing I've set up to try and separate him because I want to make sure that the food I put in there I know that he has eaten and not one one of them has eaten loads so he's in there he's got like a LED over him he's got the UV I'm blasting him with the light and heliothermy and I'm like come on buddy so he's he's cooking I gave him some stenodactylus stenodactylus scented pinky mice overnight he didn't eat them but the other ones have. Um, I don't know if it's one big one eating loads or the two big ones both eating and the little one hasn't because the little one hasn't got a bulge. So likely I'm going to separate that little one off as well and be in the bedroom and have those two together. And once I notice they're both eating, they can stay together and they can go in individual setups and I can establish them properly. Then I put them all together when they're all established and they've got weight on and they're eating. Because this is a social species. They pair bond, they have they groom each other as well as themselves. They're they're just yeah. So I was hoping, my initial thought was hoping that if some of them started eating because they're social, the others would watch and learn and copy and then start eating because they've watched one of their con specifics start eating. That didn't happen, so now I've separated. The plan is, is I'm going to Taurus smite, use the predatory mites to eat any mites they've got. And then if I can, I just want to get them to eat and eat and eat, get some strength and weight back on them. And then I will next guard them. But at a moment when they're so fragile and one of them is very, very skinny, I don't want to put drugs in his system and ask his body to metabolize that when he's so emaciated because it might push him over the edge and send him under. So the main thing I've been focusing on is hydration and then warming them up and then trying to get them to eat now. And the biggest part of it is just leave them alone in the garage, low interaction, not seeing people walk around because they're very visual sight hunters. So they can, they, you look at them and they're like looking back at you. So I don't want to stress them out. I want to leave them alone. If they do have parasites, I don't want them to stress them to the point where their immune system is just a crash and then they get overabundance and then they start to like spiral. Leave them alone. Leave them calm. Just get them to eat. And then I'll start worrying about medication and stuff. But I'm in this in-between part now where the little skinny one might die so might the little one. I'm very confident I can get two out of this. Very confident I can get two to survive and then progress onto rodents. And then I can probably have them for the rest of their lives. But I'm just saying now that I've done something that I wouldn't recommend you do. And it's go by wild caught snakes and try and establish something yourself. So if they die, I will let you know they've died. I'm not going to hide it because... I feel no shame in giving them a go and when they would have died. Uh, they've gone from certain death to potential life. So if they die, I'll let you know. I don't feel like I've failed as a pet tuber. One of the local reptile shops has a lot of frozen baby bearded dragons and baby leopard geckos in their freezer and they said I can have them. That's from like animals that they've bred and failed to start and failed to thrive and they've just chucked them in the freezer. So I can come collect them tomorrow and then I'll be able to try them on frozen thawed uh, lizards 
and hopefully I can get the little guy to eat. If not, I'm pretty sure the other little one will eat a lizard because he's still got enough weight on him that he's going to be like, oh, food, I'm going to eat. It's just not the right food for me right now. Whereas the little one, I'll worry about his energy levels and just enthusiasm for life in general. But I'm giving it a go and I'll let you know. So I'll do another update on the Shikari and we'll see how it goes. But I wouldn't recommend most people do this unless they're like, I want to establish this species in Kerpt culture for a pet keeper. Don't let yourself be guilt tripped. I'm just a twat. We'll see how they go because if they do do well, then they'll be they could be great animals. And I've, I've saved them and I will actually enjoy them as pets as well. The great little active, fast little things. They're sight hunters. They groom each other. I want to see how well they will do for target training, things like that. But that's way off in the future. At the moment, I just got to make sure they survive. And if you want to see updates on how this goes, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.